Thank you very much. We are ready to begin the question and answer segment of today's announcement. Journalists will have the opportunity to ask an opening question and a follow-up question. We will start with journalists on site before moving to the phones. Please begin by stating your name, outlet, and who your question is directed toward. Thank you. We will now take our first question from the floor. Uh, Aaron with Livewater Calgary. Mr. Sawney, has there been any discussions within cabinet to put the same kind of funding into junior highs and high schools to extend the program to those kids who might not make it down to the design center here? Yes, we've had multiple discussions on how to reach into schools to children at younger ages to provide that exposure for the trades. Um, certainly the Minister of Education, that's part of his mandate as well to find those opportunities. And so there are going to be some potential budget allocations, but we have heard time and time again from communities and our stakeholders and the construction industry that you really do have to start talking about these opportunities earlier. So this is one place where kids can get that opportunity, but we know that it's going to be a multi-pronged approach and we look forward to talking more about that. But having said that, we do a lot of work as it is already. We've got Careers, which is an organization that advanced education funds, and their job is actually to go into the high schools and talk to the students and provide those trials a trade opportunities. So there is significant work being done already, but we recognize that that message isn't getting quite to where it needs to be, so there's going to be more work allocated to this. Thank you. Question for Mr. Tate? Yeah, if you have a follow-up, go ahead. Yeah, uh, question for Mr. Tate. Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tate, can you give us a breakdown of the entire cost of the uh, uh, the opening here and then how long this will be available for visitors to come and see? Uh, well, the opening is a part of phase one. And so again, this is divided up over a, uh, a program that will exist all the way until uh, uh, into next year, into 2025. And we'll be leveraging again the, the funding from the government of Alberta in addition to any partners to be able to support that. So again, it's designated to be able to be divided appropriately as the program will evolve and grow uh, and allocated dependent on what the assets are and the requirements are. As you heard in my speaking notes before, you know, we do are planning to include VR experiences and other things like that, which have a different uh, cost structure and whatnot for execution. Uh, but we will be applying all of these funds specifically towards different components that will continue to reinforce again the importance of skill trades, but the science also connection behind them. Thank you very much. Can we please get our next question from the floor? Chris Brown, Cross Border Network. It's actually for Bill, Lane, and the Minister, if possible, all three of you. So we're just going to get everyone up on stage for a second. Um, Bill, you said that this is a long term investment that you're going to be making, the association's going to be making into the program like this. What can we do in the short term to replace or fill those? Three quarter job vacancies that we have in the city of the Calgary region right now, because short term is still important compared to the long term. Well, I think that uh, we we're doing work day to day with our members to help them connect with individuals and with individuals who are looking to connect with employers. We've added a job board to our website as another mechanism. So there's a single point of contact. We recently attended a career fair. And one of the things we learned was there, it seemed to be very difficult for many people, especially new Canadians and new Calgarians, to know where to go to, to connect their skills to employers. So we put in place, we thought it would be easier for them to remember a job board at the Calgary Construction Association then memorize a list of all the different employers in the city. So that's the direct work we're doing with our members. Our members themselves are working incredibly hard and, and we hear from them every day. We have to be agile and ready to adjust on the fly. We, we look at short term as the ne within the next five years and, and it's a window today. Our members have secured a workforce. They are planning and they are training and advancing the capabilities of that workforce and we continue to work with them and be willing to try new ideas as we see them that's why you know we really saw the initiative here this is a long-term investment but it will have a short-term impact because it will encourage those who may be in high schools this isn't just kids that are 10 years or 12 years away from graduation. And it sends a message to parents and Calgarians of the value and importance of this industry. And so I believe this will have short-term impact as well. Minister, do you, have to, do you want to respond to that as well? 
Yes, I, I think that's a great question because I do agree with Bill. This will have short-term impacts, positive impacts, and long-term as well. But certainly from the provincial government's perspective, short-term, we have put historic funding into funding trade seats across our 11 uh, post-secondary institutions with the, recognizing the fact that we do have a labour market shortage. So in the short term, whether it's uh, five to seven years, we have made that investment into these seats and we're looking for more opportunities to partner with organizations like the Operating Engineers. That was a very innovative investment as well and we think that these kinds of opportunities will create more seats as well. We are also embarking on a very aggressive media campaign to spread the message amongst communities, families, students, stakeholders and industry because we do recognize that government can't do this work alone. We need industry to step up to the table and they have in a significant way as demonstrated by Bill's remarks today but there's more that can be done because we know we don't have enough people in the pipeline to fill that labor market gap as people are retiring so it's all hands on deck and so we've got a lot of investment um, in various different organizations in addition to post-secondaries and we're going to continue to look for good ideas such as this investment that we're making today. And now to Lane for my follow-up question, if possible. You're relatively new to the skilled trades because you just came in. You're uh, the spokesperson for the young uh, skilled trades. What did you do to inspire others to get involved into the skills trades field right now? Right now. Or um, what have you done or what are you doing? Right now, my biggest contribution to getting people interested and excited about the trades has been through Skills Alberta. I've been a competitor at alumni and I'm now on the provincial technical committees and have been volunteering with them for upwards of seven years now. And through my competitions and my passion, through my competing and my pride in my work, I show off to everybody else my passions, how I see everything differently than just a trade, all the different aspects, all the different sciences that go into everything and how applicable everything can be to everyday life. So if you don't mind, I just have a follow up on that. Would something like this blueprint help helped you a little bit more to make that final decision to transition to the skilled trades? Oh, absolutely. Yes. I started off in engineering. Um, same sort of at home conversation of the trades are a little bit lesser, you know, all of my aunts and uncles are engineers, you should follow that line. So actually getting into the industry and seeing, hey, this is my engineering, but so much more rewarding, it would have made my choice as a career much easier. Do we have any further questions from the floor? Seeing no questions from the floor and being told we have none on the lines, I think we can conclude today's announcement. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Let's go build. <laughs>